I think that GPT-4, although quite impressive, is definitely not an AGI, but isn't it remarkable we're having this debate? <laughs> yeah. So what's your intuition why it's not? I think we're getting into the phase where specific definitions of AGI really matter. <laughs> yeah. Or we just say, you know, I know it when I see it, and I'm not even going to bother with the definition. Um, but under the I know it when I see it, it doesn't feel that close to me. Like, if if I were reading a sci-fi book, and there was a character that was an AGI, and that character was GPT-4, I'd be like, well, this is a shitty book. Like, you know, that's not very cool. Like, I was, I would have hoped we had done better. To me, some of the, the human factors are important here. Do you think GPT-4 is conscious? I think no, but... I asked GPT-4, and of course it says no. Do you think GPT-4 is conscious? I think it knows how to fake consciousness. Yes. How to fake consciousness? Yeah. If 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 uh if you provide the right interface and the right prompts. It definitely can answer as if it were. Yeah. And then it starts getting weird. It's like what is the difference between pretending to be conscious and conscious? If I mean, you, look, me. you don't know, obviously. We can go to like the freshman your dorm late at Saturday night kind of thing. You don't know that you're not a GPT-4 rollout in some advanced simulation. Yeah, yes. So if we're willing to go to that level, sure. I'm, like, I live in that level. <laughs> well, but that's an important, that's an important level. That's an important, uh, that's a really important level because one of the things that makes it not conscious is declaring that it's a computer program, therefore it can't be conscious, so I'm not going to, I'm not even going to acknowledge it. But that just puts it in the category of other. I, I believe AI can be conscious. So then the question is, what would it look like when it's conscious? What would it behave like? And it would probably say things like, first of all, I am conscious. Second of all, um, display capability of suffering, uh, a, a, an understanding of self of uh, having some memory of itself and maybe interactions with you. Maybe there's a personalization aspect to it. And I think all of those capabilities are interface capabilities, not fundamental aspects of the actual knowledge so, inside the neural net. Maybe I can just share a few like disconnected thoughts here. Sure. <laughs> but I'll tell you something that Ilya said to me once a long time ago that has like stuck in my head. Ilya Sitzgever. Yes, my co-founder and the chief scientist of OpenAI and sort of legend in the field. Um, we were talking about how you would know if a model were conscious or not. And I've heard many ideas thrown around, but he said one that, that I think is interesting. If you trained a model on a data set that you were extremely careful to have no mentions of consciousness or anything close to it in the training process, like not only was the word never there, but nothing about the sort of subjective experience of it or related concepts. And then you st started talking to that model about here are some things that you weren't trained about. And for most of them, the model was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But then you asked it, a, you sort of described the experience the subjective experience of consciousness, and the model immediately responded, unlike the other questions, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. That would update me somewhat. I don't know, because that's more in the space of facts versus like emotions. I don't think consciousness is an emotion. I think consciousness is the ability to sort of experience this world really deeply. I, there's a movie called Ex Machina. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? No. The director, Alex Garland, who I had a conversation. So it's a, where AGI system is built, embodied in the body of a, a woman. And uh, something he doesn't make explicit, but he's, he said he put in the movie without describing why. But at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, when the AI escapes, the woman escapes. Uh, she smiles for nobody, for no audience. 
um, she smiles at the pers- like at the freedom she's experiencing. Experiencing, I don't know, anthropomorphizing. But he said the smile to me was the uh, was passing the Turing test mm. for consciousness. That you smile for no audience. Mm. You smile for yourself. It's an interesting thought. It's like you you taking an experience for the experience's sake. I don't know. Um, that seemed more like consciousness versus the ability to convince somebody else that you're conscious. And that feels more like a realm of emotion versus facts. But yes, if it knows- yeah. So I think there's many other tasks, tests like that, that we could look at too. Um, but you know, my personal beliefs, consciousness is if something very strange is going on. <laughs> Say that. Um, do you think it's attached to the particular medium of our of the human brain? Do you think an AI can be conscious? I'm certainly willing to believe that consciousness is somehow the fundamental substrate, and we're all just in the dream or the simulation or whatever. Yeah. I think it's interesting how much sort of the Silicon Valley religion of the simulation has gotten close to like Brahman and how little space there is between them, um, but from these very different directions. So like maybe that's what's going on. But if if it is like physical reality as we understand it and all of the rules of the game are what we think they are, then then there's something, I still think it's something very strange. <laughs>